Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. Today, we are going to be discussing Perilous Tales by Planet Smasher Games. So let's get started. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and this is Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. Today we're going to be discussing a new game by Perilous Tales by Planet Smasher Games. Now, this game was written by Mike Hutchinson. Some of you may recognize that name. He is the author of Gaslands. This game is a solo or cooperative game based in the pulp genre, or, or more specifically, I would argue, the pulp horror genre. Uh, at present, this game is available for free uh, through Planet Smasher Games. Uh, it is in its beta testing, and that's why I say at present. I'm not sure if his intention is to keep it as a free game once it's actually finished being tested, but at present, it is available on Planet Smasher Games as a free PDF download. The game is designed to be played in multiple different periods in multiple different places. It has a system for rolling up your, your scenarios, though you can modify that a lot depending on what you want, the feel of your game, and what figures you have available for you. I noticed on another uh, YouTube channel, they're specifically playing it as an X-Files game. So you can alter the period for the game, you can off alter the figures, there's no reason this game wouldn't work as a science fiction game. Uh, the one thing it does usually have consistent going through it is there is a feeling of horror. So it's not just a pulp game the way, say, 7TV Pulp or Pulp Alley are, uh, but more specifically it has that built-in thought that it's going to be a, like a John Carpenter movie or something to those, those ends. There's usually some horror involved in it. It is, as I mentioned, a solo game or a cooperative. It could be played cooperatively with different people playing the different hero characters. It isn't necessarily a combat game, and this I, I think is particularly interesting. I've recently recommended to a friend of mine who's been working on a plan for a uh, Scooby-Doo game for children for some time, and there are other ways of achieving victory based on the different objectives in the game than just defeating your opponents. Uh, you might just be trying to get a picture. The game is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. It is. It is more like a role-playing game, like these games often are, uh, but the rule system is much simpler than you're going to find in a typical role-playing game. It's a very sort of beer and pretzel-y game. It's designed to be played on a very small table, on a two-by-two -two table. And so what we're going to do, I've rolled up some characters based on the same team I've been using in some of my other videos, my SS Venture crew. You've seen them already in 7TV, you've seen them in Pulp Alley, and now I've converted them over to Perilous Tales. So let's now go to the gaming table. You can have up to three objectives. We're going to be playing with only one, which is Call for Rescue. Uh, what that means, within nine inches of the far side, the enemy side of the table, is a radio. Uh, they have to make it across the board into that building on the far side there. Uh, the radio is hidden in there. There are a number of white discs you can see on the table, or maybe you can see them. Uh, the most obvious one is right there. Uh, those are all threat markers. Those have to do with the placement and the arrival of the, um, the bad guys, the enemy themselves, the villains. When you create a game, Perilous Tales, you can either choose on your own or randomly choose who the opponent will be. Uh, in this case, I picked one based on figures I had available. We're doing Old Man Waitley and his cultists. Uh, you pick a location. I rolled and got English Village, uh, and I was too lazy to change my table. So you'll notice the table is still set up in Chinese. Uh, but in this game, it's a 2x2, it's a two two, or 24-inch by 24-inch table. Very, very small. This is a very quick, fast-paced, beer and pretzel sort of game. So much smaller terrain. Um, all that that really meant, the English Village, should have been setting up certain danger levels. Uh, that's not what they call them. Um, there are certain threats that are caused by your location. And unfortunately, English Village hasn't actually been written up yet. Remember, this is a, a beta game. Uh, it isn't fully completed yet. So I am using the basic location threats, which means on a threat card of a six, I get a thousand cuts. Seven, I get unsteady underfoot. And eight is disaster strikes. Those are various 
effects that will be caused by threat markers other than just the uh, the bad guys themselves. They will also um, be tied to certain of those threat markers. The threat level, which begins as, a, as level one, will continually increase throughout the game until we get to the point where, um, well, if we get to threat level 10 before I get the help, I'll call the radio for help, then I lose. I could have chosen up to three of those objectives, which probably would have been a good idea, because uh, it will increase those chances of getting points. But I decided just to go with the one to keep the game simple today. But you can you can choose up to three. I chose that randomly. I have a series of cards there, and I pulled that randomly out of the pile. This game works in a certain game phase order. It begins with the activation of the heroes. Now, any leader, the leader has... Uh, the, the characters are all scored pretty much the same. Basically, a leader has... Uh, has 12 wounds he can take, he has a skill of 4, and he has 3 actions he can take. Uh, whereas all the teammates, they're skill level 2, and they have 8 wounds, and they have 2 actions they can take. Uh, where they vary a little is all of them, the leader can choose 2 upgrades, and the um, individuals can all choose 1 upgrade. And those are various skills. For uh, Captain Inglehorn, I took Lucky, which allows me to re-roll dice, and Tough Guy, which lets me uh, avoid wounds, or some of my wounds. Uh, so simpler than the other two pulp games I recently showed. But let's get started. We've been talking too much. So it begins with their action. The uh, heroic actions, there's heroic actions and special actions, and there's a lot of them are the things you would expect. The uh, movement and shooting and interacting with things like that radio. Um, there's also uh, a few other things they can do. They can uh, keep an eye peeled, which is uh, any other war game would probably call that Overwatch. It allows you to give up your action immediately to be able to interrupt later. In this game, that can be very useful because anytime we get within six inches of those threat markers, we activate them. That can end my turn, and it'll almost, it has a good chance of causing an ambush, depending on whether it's actually a villainous character or, or something else. Um, but we got to get all the way across the board there. We want to, what I'm going to do is move my first movement. They move four inches for an action. So that would be one of his, his three action points. Uh, I'm going to move him over to the truck and then leave him with uh, his eyes peeled. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and move everybody that way. They're just going to, well, the rest of them can't move that far. If they're going to do, I'm going to do eye peeled on everybody, so I can only move four inches. But that'll give them a chance to respond if something should uh, make itself known. Uh, this is uh, Captain Inglehorn, Lumpy, Ben Hayes, uh, Jane Driscoll, the first mate, and Stowaway Choi. We go to the uh, villains phase. And the first thing that happens on villains phase is we roll for the threat check. They try to increase their threat check. So the way the dice on any skill works, there's going to be a number of D10 in at least two colors. One of those we're going to be using the red die. That's going to be the difficulty dice. That sets the difficulty level for the game. Or I should say for the roll. That sets the difficulty roll level that they are trying to roll on their roll. Then their skill number is going to give you a certain number of blue dice. Now, when we roll, the threat's uh, skill is going to be based on the present skill, uh, threat level. Presently, we are at, le at threat level one, so they get one die for that. Now, the red die I mentioned was difficulty. There's things in the game called advantage and disadvantage. That's how they handle most of their modifiers. It's a pretty simple system. You either have advantage or you have disadvantage or you don't have either. Uh, if you have advantage, you get two of the difficulty dice. Normally, the difficulty dice sets what you have to roll to be successful. But if you have an advantage and the threat roll is always advantage, then what's going to happen is he gets two difficulty die and he's going to take away the one that is highest, the one that would be higher to beat. Uh, if it was disadvantaged, you would do the opposite. You would take 
the lower one. But so for the first roll, first threat level roll of the game. All right, so we take the uh, lower one. We leave that with a one, easily beat. So that is one success. One success on a threat level. Uh, what that means is we're going to go up. That is one success. There's a threat check results chart. I look at that. Uh, one to two successes is the noose titans. Move each unrevealed threat marker one inch towards the hero nearest it. Uh, if there is a hero within 10 inches. If there is no hero within 10, 10 inches, then you move one inch towards the center. The nearest to most of these is going to be... Um, is going to be uh, the captain there. Um, so this is going to move one inch. Uh, it is still out of range. Um, this one is going to move towards the center of the table one inch. Um, just so you know, in case you're wondering about this one on the roof here, the threat markers ignore terrain. All right, this one's going to actually move this way towards Troy. Oh, and this one's going to matter. All right, that's going to be our first activation. Uh, I flip that over, it reveals a three. We'll deal with that in a moment. But first I want to move all of the other, the other markers. Uh, one inch, one inch. You'll notice these are like slowly creeping up and that's kind of how the beginning of the game goes. Uh, the setup pattern for these was uh, also, there's a handful of different setup patterns in the book and you roll a chart to see which setup pattern you're using. Now, I mentioned that one of the threat markers has been revealed. That's because it has become within six inches of, um, of a hero character. If this had been, like we, if she had moved up to it, the same thing would have happened, but it could have caused an ambush and stopped our, our heroic turn. But this is actually the villain turn, so it's a little bit different. Ooh, three is the monster itself. Um, nope, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong chart. Three is uh, Lavinia Waitley. Lavinia is the wife of old man Waitley. Uh, she's a sorcerer. She's a minion. Um, there's, these stats are going to be things that show how they are used, what they do once they deploy. Uh, so she's only a minion. That's how they're rated. There's masters and minions. She's a pack hunter. That's going to have to do with how she responds. Uh, well, I'll explain that in a moment. She has four wounds. Might as well set the marker for that now. She has four wounds and she has skill five. Now, she also has Bless You My Children. If either Wilbur Waitley or the Dunwich Horror are within four inches of her at the start of a villain's phase, both uh, Wilbur and the Dunwich Horror can recover 1d10 lost wounds. But she's the first one actually to appear, so that's not going to be what happens. So she shows up. She's going to show up within an inch of the closest person, that's going to be Troy. And the inch is in, within range, so she could actually do stuff. That's the new Titans, causes her everything to move forward, which activated her, uh, but it also then applies the threatening overture result. All of these include each of the results one, uh, one step lower until everything on the board is covered. Um, so the one step under, the lowest one here, the, what would it, is threatening overture. That's a plus one to the threat level. So our threat level goes up to two. So you can see that it's going to slowly increase uh, throughout the game. There's other things that can actually happen to speed up a little bit. Now it is the villain's turn. There's only one villain out there. And she's sort of pre-programmed. Remember I mentioned, this is what I meant when I said she was a pack hunter. What that means, she has to go down this order of priorities. The first thing she does is she checks to see if there are any other villainous models within three inches of her. Uh, if there were, she would become a lurker instead of a pack hunter. But there is nobody else out there right now. So she doesn't get to do that. So the second action would then be to attack a target hero. If she couldn't do that, she would move to three, which is advance. But, um, but there is somebody within her, her range. So she is going to attack Choi. Her skill, I believe it was five. Her skill is five. So I take five blue dice. Going to be a straight up roll. So that's just the one difficulty dice. So it will be either five or higher based on what the red die gets. So there's an example. She rolled a one on her difficulty die. That's lower than five, so we're gonna use the five number. On the normal dice, the, the skill dice, 
I, I should mention if that red dice was a 10, that is a, a failure. You cannot succeed if you roll a 10 on the red dice. In this case, I have a 10 on the blue. If your skill dice are 10, they count as double. If they're a 1, they can't be successful. Even if your skill difficulty was only 1, a 1 always fails. Uh, but in this case, we need 5s, so 4 of these hit. But like I said, that counts as a double. So that's 5 hits. That's 5 successes, which equates to 5 hits. Uh, she has, what did I say, 4 wounds? Yeah, she takes, she's down. That was quick. Our first character is actually out of the game. Lavinia is down. Let me move, I should have moved her little threat card. So we've had a success early on, and that was the only active enemy. So we go on to the second turn, hero phase. Uh, well, the heroes feel a little bit light, a little bit better off. They feel like they know what they're doing. Um, game's going well for them so far. Had their first victory, even if it is just an old lady. Um, I don't know if I want to go very far. I could be, I'm going to be, definitely don't want to move him first. I'm going to go ahead and move Joy. Peel her eyes. You'll notice I didn't have to use that. Last time, move him, peel. That's her, that's Jane Driscoll. And Doc, and Ben Hayes. Now do I wanna, I'm gonna go ahead and activate that one. So, I'm gonna go up here, and that activates this. That's a five. Five is a, um, is a random, uh, he actually shows up within one. Five is a random minion, uh, or not a random minion, it's a uh, cultist. They're engaged, uh, the captain and, and uh, his opponent. Hand-to-hand -hand attack, because he's in range. So, uh, minimum difficulty is equal to the target skill. So that means uh, the target in this case is what, four? The cultists are skill five, wound four. They're also pack hunters and minions, uh, just like the wife. So, um, he has to roll a four. There's no advantage or disadvantage here. His skill level is four. So the difficulty is 10, that is a fail no matter what. Uh, that's an example of what I said by failed roll. Now it is the, uh, the ambush turn by the, uh, remember this, that just happened because I had my eyes peeled. But the response is going to be now that interrupted the cultist, but now the cultist takes his actual move. And uh, my skill is four, so that's higher than the three. So he needs fours, uh, but he's got them. Uh, that was a one, so it couldn't have hit no matter what. But he has three hits. So he hits three hits for uh, on Captain Inglehorn, except Inglehorn is a tough guy, so he ignores the first one of those. So he takes two hits, and that's our first wound of the game. Now, and that was, as I said, that was an ambush. Now we go actually to their turn. So the first thing we do is we roll for their um, threat level. Now the threat level has gone up to two, so they get two dice for that now. And it is always um, affected by the, uh, it's always an advantage. So the advantage gets two difficulty dice. We take away the highest one. So all they need are twos. Uh, that counts as two, so that's three successes. So, that's Crawling Chaos. So each hero makes a horror check. The horror checks are done uh, in a similar fashion. It is um, uh, to what we've been talking about. So I have to roll four dice for Inglehorn. Uh, he needs a six, and he needs one success, and he's got it. Uh, then two dice for everybody else. Um, we'll deal the dock first. The dock has got it with that 10. Well, actually, both of those were successful. They only need one success on each of these. Uh, Driscoll needs a four, has it with that seven. Ben Hayes needs a three, got it with both of them. 
and Choi. All of them make their horror roles for Crawling Chaos. If, if there was a master model out here, we, he would heal three of his points back. Nice Titans, which is that one inch move of all of the little markers. I suspect we're going to have some other markers go off. This should be happening in the order of how close they are. Uh, so I think this one's closest. So it moves an inch. Um, this one moves an inch. This one moves an inch. An inch. An inch. And inch. Oops. So nobody's revealed. We uh, we go to the minion. The, the cultist is a pack hunter. If you check the villainous models within three inches, there aren't any right now. So he doesn't go to lurking. So instead he's going to attack that hero again that he's next to. Needs a, needs a four or whatever the red die gives him. This skill is five. I should have. Uh, okay, so that red die is superseded by my skill. Uh, but it's still only four, so that's the only one that misses. That's five points of damage. Ow, 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 ow. I ignore the first one, but then that's four. One, two, three, four. So, Inglehorn right now is half, half dead. Bad, 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 bad day for Inglehorn. I forgot that they, to move my threat level marker. We're also at threat level three now. Um, we gotta start moving if we're gonna get that marker. And so with that in mind, I'm going to bring in, uh, uh, on our turn, our, our round, I'm going to return my shooting with Captain Englehorn. He is four. He needs a seven. The ones both fail. So he gets two hits on the cultists. But he gets three actions. That was only his first action. So we're going to go ahead and keep doing that until we knock him, knock him down. That shouldn't be that hard. Uh, that's a five. Five is what we would have needed regardless. But that, that is four hits. That's all, all he can do. So we drop a cultist. That cultist is down. I still have one action. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, should have moved him first. Problem is, if I get within six inches of those white things, I'm gonna lose the rest of everybody's movement. All right, I'm okay. I'm gonna move to here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move the dock and put dock on uh, ice peeled. And Driscoll on eyes peeled. Choi and uh, Ben Hayes. So that's going to end their turn. Uh, it is now, we're now at danger level three. And we roll for effect. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the eight. There's a nine and eight on those, so not a whole lot of difference. None of those are successful, so that is a zero successes. The only effect on a zero success is that only the threat level rises. So that's bad for me because this game ends if we get to threat level 10. And we're already at threat level 4 and we haven't achieved much. Alright, we're going to have to go ahead and be offensive here because we are losing time and I don't have anything for them to activate right now anyway. So we're going to go ahead and start charging forward. We've activated number four. A four is uh, Wilbur Waitley is a minion. He is aggressive. He has eight wounds and he has skill six. So he's kind of the, the rough and tumble guy of this group, uh, of the non-monsters. Uh, one inch from, this is what we call an ambush. My character was not our eyes peeled, uh, Captain Inglehorn, I mean. So he's gonna get ambushed. His skill's five. 
So Wilbur hits with five. Uh, seven is what he's going to need. He's got a ten. That counts as two. There's a ten, which counts as two. And eight. So that's three hits. I ignore the first one. So two hits on Captain Inglehorn, who is not doing very well. So that was the ambush. Now we'll go right into the turn. So we have to roll for the threat level first. We're now at four. Uh, threat level is still an advantage. It's always an advantage. Uh, okay. He, we, can, we can remove the 10, which would normally have been an automatic fail. So sixes are what are needed. We have two hits, two successes. So two successes on a threat put us at Noose Titans. So that's the figures all moving forward thing. That's probably going to start hurting us. They move to the closest if they're within 10. So that one's going to be exposed. That's a problem. That's a six. Um, that one is going to be exposed. That's a seven. That's another problem. I'll explain in a moment what those mean. The six and sevens, what those, those are those general effects I was talking about. Six, seven, and eight. So we might as well go in the order of, so we'll do the six one first. Six is a thousand cuts. When revealed, the, re the revealer suffers a skill three attack. Uh, the threat marker will remain in play, and any time somebody's within six inches of it, they risk that uh, skill three attack. The closest is who's going to take it. The revealer is the one who, who actually caused it to be revealed, and that is Driscoll. So Driscoll's taking a, um, a skill three attack. Uh, Driscoll's skill is two. Um, All right, so the five is higher than the two, so five's what he's gonna need, but he's got uh, four hits there. Four hits on Driscoll. That is, Driscoll has just gone from being untouched to being half dead. That's dangerous. Now, seven, unsteady underfoot. Uh, must make a skill check or fall down. So his skill is four. Has to, has to get at least one success. Success is made by six, so he's, they're all successes. If it wasn't, if he hadn't done that, he would have fallen, and that would have put him in a problem with that fight right there, because uh, he's going to be fighting. Because um, it is their activation. So, so he gets swung at again by Wilbur. Uh, it's a five, uh, one, two, so there's three hits. It ignores the first one. So two more hits on Captain Inglehorn. Captain Inglehorn is in trouble. I really need to get him out of that fight, and I need to get the dock up to him. Uh, that is the only activation they have, though, so that takes us to the next round. I could try to disengage with Inglehorn. That's not going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and attack for my first action. I'm going to keep attacking until he's down, frankly. Uh, I need a 9 to hit, uh, so none of those hit. So we'll take a second action. I uh, only need a 1 to hit this time, uh, though that means it'll fall to his, uh, his 5. Um, that's 1s are always fails, but the rest of those are 3 hits. Um, So he drops to five, and I'm going to take my last action to try that again, because I didn't hit him hard enough, and that's an automatic fail with that ten. Not good. That is not good. Um, so what I'm going to need to do, I need to get out of the range of that thing anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and move, oh, she can't get to the fight. Well, 
much you can get close. So, and same thing over here. Actually, put in. All right. Well, that might be bad. Yeah, Hayes needs to move over here. Um, otherwise, you can take that 100 cuts again. Um, okay, they end their turn within the range of that thing, so we have to do a skill test for, for Driscoll, or Driscoll will fall. Driscoll does fall. Driscoll's down. Uh, we do a threat level check. We are now at level 4. So we take the harder one to get, that leaves us with three. Uh, the ones are always going to fail, but those two tens, that's, those are four. So five successes. This is going to hurt. Five successes on the uh, threat check. Five successes is from the shadows. Uh, we spawn a random minion within one inch of the hero. That's because of the nature of this game, that's going to be one of the... Uh, of this scenario, this episode, that's going to be a cultist. So, it spawned uh, the hero with the fewest number of heroes within three inches. Um, well, they've all got people around them. I'm going to put them, put them there. Um, Sorry, that should have been one inch of the hero with the fewest number of heroes within three inches. And everybody's got three inches around, but he should be one inch. It should be closest to the villainous edge, though. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put him there, which I think meets those objectives. Um, then we go down to Crawling Chaos. Crawling Chaos is each character makes a horror check based on their skill. I'm going to do uh, Inglehorn first. Uh, Inglehorn. I don't know if we roll that. That was cocked. Uh, he makes it because of those tens. We will do. Uh, we'll do Driscoll. Not that she can do much. She's on the ground. Uh, that's a success. Um, Lumpy. Uh, Lumpy fails. So Lumpy walks away. That's a four inch walk away. Um, ben Hayes stays and Choi. Choi fails automatically. So the noose tightens. That's those, uh, the discs all move a little closer. News tightens, and the last is the current threat goes up. So we are now at current threat five, and things are not going well for our heroes. Uh, we got to start getting out of here. So we're going to active. We activate the closest to the enemy. There's actually two that are close right now, but I'm going to go ahead and do uh, William Whateley first, or Walter Whaley. Um, he's aggressive, so he has no check he has to make. He can attack a target hero. He's got two targets within. Uh, his priority is a model that's within seven. Everybody's within seven of him. Uh, a model within three inches of an objective. Nobody's within three inches. The model with the fewest wounds, that's actually Jane Driscoll. So he's going to attack Jane Driscoll. This could be bad for Jane. So he takes a swing at Jane. His red dice are 10 and 5. We're going to take the 10 off, making it a 5. So the 1's an automatic failure. So that's 3 hits. She survives that. Not by a lot. Not by a lot. She's in trouble. And she's still on the ground. Uh, yeah, but now she's going to get attacked by the, uh, the minion. That skill should have been 6. There should have been one more die there. His skill's six. I've been shorting him dice. Uh, 
Also advantaged. He's not going to beat that one though. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's all it takes. He's killed Jane Driscoll. Now they all have to do a fear roll, which is basically a horror roll. So we will start with Captain Inglehorn. Inglehorn makes his. Uh, anybody in line of sight, but that is everybody right now. Uh, Hayes. Hayes cannot make his. So Hayes moves away. Um, Choi makes hers. And Lumpy makes hers. So that was rough. That was rough. That's for having seen Driscoll killed. Luckily, that doesn't change the situation for Inglehorn. He's close to being disadvantaged, but he's not quite there yet. So he's going to go ahead and shoot at Whaley. Uh, he needs nines. He has one hit. That's his first activation. His second activation, uh, that's going to go to uh, Whaley's six because he rolled a three on the difficulty, so it goes to six. He's got uh, two tens, a six, and a nine, however, so that is um, five, six, that's six points. That kills. Um, and it leaves him with one action. Uh, he's going to go ahead and shoot because he's not engaged with um, with uh, the cultist. So he gets an extra die for that because shooting gives you a plus one. He's still not advantage or disadvantage. He, uh, he'll need a five because he rolled four. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five. Um, I didn't put a marker down for him. What is his hits? Cultists take four wounds. That's another, that's a cultist down. That is good shooting by our hero. Uh, however, it also took all of his turns and he's going to end up within the range of that uh, knockdown again. Everybody is. We just have, we have to get in that building. So, four. Eight. He's going to be risking knockdown. She's going to risk knockdown. And I'm going to run over this way because I don't. I'd rather. I'd rather get knocked down than. All right. So we have to roll skills or get knocked down. That's. Uh, so for Ben, Ben's okay. Choi, Choi cannot make that roll. Choi is knocked down. Um, Captain Inglehart, no problem. And the Doc, Doc's fine. I actually should do some healing there. I should have done healing. All right, so um, that's the end of their turn. That takes us to the threat level. We take away the nine, and they have, that's two six, they need sixes. That's two successes, three, four. Four successes, that's rough. Four successes on the uh, threat level roll. That's crawling chaos. Uh, they all have to do... <laughs> They all have to do horror checks again. So, uh, well, we'll do Hayes first. Hayes makes his. Choi. I'm not sure she can actually do that. She's knocked down. Um, Choi failed hers. Um, Inglehorn makes his, and the dock fails. Lumpy, lumpy, lumpy. This is getting to be where we can't, can't make it. 
All right, uh, that was the first part. That was the crawling chaos. The, um, the unveiled ones move an inch. This one will now veil. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. All right. Uh, one is uh, Old Man Waitley himself. So Old Man Waitley shows up. And that means that the threat level automatically goes up for that to six, for him having appeared. Um, the eight is the last of those general event cards. The uh, basic threat. That's going to be disaster strikes. When revealed, the revealer suffers a skill seven attack. If this attack does one or more wounds, the model is knocked down. Discard the threat. This one doesn't stay. That's good, at least. But that's a lot of dice. And that was activated on Ben Hayes. Oh, poor Ben. Because he only needs one success. Uh, but he needs it at eight. Uh, oh, no, this is... This is an attack that doesn't work the way I was saying. Uh, he does an eight. There's that's good. There's only one hit. Ben takes a hit. So the Ben is tough, so he doesn't take a hit. Good, good thing. He survives that. That rough attack. But we're not done. Um it's still going to put him in uh, range of a shoot. Um, actually, do we want to do that or do we want to use this spell? Old Man Whaley. He is a master, a lurker, eight wounds, and skill five. Um, lurker means he has to check first. If the threat level is seven or higher, it isn't. Not yet. Uh, I think... I think it was actually because we didn't we didn't finish doing our threat levels. We did the new Titans, but we didn't do threat and overture, so we are at seven because that should have gone up uh, at the end of that threat roll. So we are now at seven. If the threat level is seven, uh, or all threat markers are revealed, um, we saw threat markers that are not revealed. He would go to aggressive, uh, so he can go aggressive. So instead of sounding the alarm, he's going to go aggressive. That means he will attack the hero. He can do that from here. Um, his villainous attack range is increased to 10. His, um, his skill level is only 5. He's attacking Ben there. Uh, I think, frankly, that he is disadvantaged because Ben's got cover from that well. Uh, but they're both nines, so it doesn't matter. He needs nines to hit. He gets one hit. Um, but Ben is a tough guy, so he doesn't take that. So it goes to the hero's turn. Um, we got lots of stuff we need to do. Um, lots of risky moves here. I'm going to go ahead and shoot with our hero. He is um, disadvantaged because the target is in cover. Uh, that's not good because he rolls a 10, so that first shot's an automatic fail. But he's got three activations, so he's going to use a second activation. Um, this one needs a 9. Uh, that's going to miss, so might as well use the third activation. Needs sixes, and he got two. So that that was hard, but he got two hits on him. Two hits on Old Man Wiggly. Uh, 
Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do the same thing with um, the Ben Hayes. Ben Hayes is shooting. Uh, he misses with the first shot. He's going to go ahead and try a second shot. Uh, he needs a nine. He misses with both shots, and he's going to end his turn. The risk of falling down. Oh, eight should have come off. The um, Choi's going to stand up. Um, and stay back here, I think. Doc is going to close and do a first aid skill roll. Unsuccessfully. Whoops. Keep picking up my counter. Should have grabbed a different dice for that. All right. So people within. So a skill check for Hayes. Uh, He's standing. Uh, for Choi. Choi is standing. Inglehorn. Inglehorn is down, and the dock. The dock is down. Oh, that down shaky ground. All right, things are getting rough for the threat levels. We're now at threat level seven. Twos, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight successes. Eight successes on the Eight successes on the threat roll. Uh, trap is sprung. Move the two unrevealed threat markers furthest from any hero towards the target hero for each of them. Target hero is a target within seven inches. Uh, they move seven inches towards a target within seven inches. So that's bad. That's two. Um, two is the Dunwich monster, and he's on Haze. So the Dunwich monster shows up. That's not good. Spawn a random minion within one inch of the fewest number of heroes within three. Uh, um, that's going to be on Hayes. A roll first. Um, so horror roll for Hayes. Hayes is okay, believe it or not. Uh, Choi. Choi is okay. Inglehorn. Inglehorn is okay. And Lumpy. They all make their horror rolls. Now they don't move, but there's nothing left to move. Uh, and then the level goes up. Two eight, and the game is nearly lost. Turn down, but now it is their turn, and we're going to start with the um, Dunmore monster, the Dunwich Dunmore. He's the Dunwich horror. He's a minion. He's aggressive. He has twelve wounds in skill seven. He's also terrifying, uh, so you have to make a skill check, and with an increased chance of misfortune before you can attack him. Did I say eight? Eight, and he's advantaged. Uh, so he needs threes, and that's two. Three, four, five. So that's five points of damage to Ben Hayes, who's in bad, bad shape. Um, the cultist is now going to attack. He's got uh, five, uh, five dice. Also advantaged. The outnumbers Ben Hayes, uh, so he needs threes. That's four hits, but one is stopped, so three get through. Not good. Hayes is down. Hayes has been dropped. Need to do horror rolls. Choi is fine. Lumpy is fine. Move him over to here. 
All right, so stuff's got to happen. Uh, first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to stand up with Inglehorn. That's one action. I'm going to shoot the critters. I'm going to shoot the big one. Get a nine. Nothing hits. One more shot. Uh, I need eights. So that's one hit on him. That ain't much. That is not much. I needed more than that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close with Choi. Oh, Troy can't get up there. Troy's going to hide in the cover of the building and shoot. She's not really good at that. She's going to shoot at the, uh, the uh, minion, the, the, the cultist, but that's an automatic miss. Her second hit. Uh, well, we go to five, so that's also a miss. This is not good. Uh, Lumpy has to get up. Lumpy's going to go ahead and roll a skill roll for her doctoring which she gets with two successes. Um, should have had plus one skill. So let's go ahead and roll more dice. She's had two successes already, that's a failure. Uh, so uh, that heals four wounds. Ah, <sighs> not good. It is now their turn. And we are at danger eight. Fives, that's a miss, that's a miss. One, two, three, four. Four successes, crawling chaos. We have to roll all those dice roll again. We have for, for movement, Choi. Whoops, that's not how that works. Uh, Choi makes hers. The Doc makes her, hers. And Captain Englehorn makes his. All right, so that's the first part. The, there's nothing to crawl forward anymore. This goes up to nine. We are really close to losing. There's, we, the one with the less, okay, so target hero. They're all within seven. The model within three inches of an objective, that's nobody. Uh, the model with the fewest wounds. Maybe Captain Inglehorn. That is Captain Inglehorn. Everybody's gonna attack Inglehorn. So we'll do uh, the uh, cultus first. He needs a five. One, two, three, four. He gets four, ignores the first one. So three gets through. One, two, three. Uh, the creature. Uh, the creature can't attack the target hero, but he can advance. So he's going to advance and then attack him. That he can do. Oh, but he is now disadvantaged. He needs a six. There's four, only three of which get through. That's all he needed. Captain Inglehorn is down. I've got to do a fear roll for the dock. She does not make it. She takes off. Fear roll for Choi. Choi doesn't make it. Choi takes off. I think I'm going to call this a failure. Um, the uh, I'll just end here. I think the the two heroes or the two unwounded people are just going to keep leaving, leave the table, uh, leave Inglehorn to his fate. So I hope you enjoyed that game of Perilous Tales. I think you'll see that it's a pretty 
fast and easy to play game. It's, it's clearly a beer and pretzel game. Still a lot of fun. You never know where it's going to take you. The, um, the various changes of the threat levels and how that increases. Interesting little game. Now, I'm sure I made some mistakes. That's only the second time I played the game. Uh, and, uh, and, and it was on camera. Uh, so I don't doubt that I got some things wrong. If you recognize, if you're familiar with the game and you catch things I've done wrong, please tell us in the notes below. Uh, if you enjoyed the game, go ahead and make your comments or didn't enjoy it for that matter. Go ahead and let me know that through the comments as well. If there's anything you're particularly interested in seeing us do here on Cry Havoc Wargaming, let us know by the comments down below. If you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and hit like or subscribe. And um, we look forward to seeing you next time here on Cry Havoc Wargaming. Cheers.